It's Friday at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Day number one for the Strongman. One event is down, two to go. We've had all kinds of things going on here at Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas, including highly trained individuals jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, the leapfrog from the U.S. Navy dropping in, and that is what is up next. It is the Iron Bull presented by Yeti. Glad you could be with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lauren Chalet, second event for the Strongman here. Lots the first question is, who do you expect to do well here? I think the big names that started well on the deadlift, Mitch Hooper, Trey Mitchell looked unbelievable, very, very powerful. But the man that really needs to do well is Kiliaszkowski. Bad start on the deadlift, as expected. Now he needs to pull himself back into contention. And once again, starting in a hole is Mateusz Kiliaszkowski after getting no reps in the first event of the day, the Tower of Power. And we will see if he fares better here in the Iron Bull. This is the overall standings coming in here. We had a tie for first place between Bobby Thompson and Trey Mitchell in the Tower of Power, both of them getting eight reps. So they split the points for first and second place. So nine and a half each for them. Mitchell Hooper doing what Mitchell Hooper does, just hanging out in the top five. He finished third in that opening event. Defending champion Alexei Novikov, one point back of Hooper. And then it is Tom Stoltman rounding out the top five. Event number two is the Iron Bull. You have a minute to pull that thing 50 feet. It weighs 1,000 pounds, more than 453 kilos. Yeah, massive, massive weight. And, and the friction is going to be the challenging thing on this one. A big Brian Shaw has been testing it. He's got the weight right for the athletes. Let's see how they do. Here is your start list for this event. And it's Mateusz Kieliszkowski who's going to lead things off. Maxime Boudreau will be after him. Those are the two men that failed to get a single rep on the Tower of Power. And the men who finished first, Trey Mitchell and Bobby Thompson, will be the last men to go. But now Brian Shaw has been testing this event and been working with the Iron Bull, and he spoke with Kiki Dixon about what it's going to take to be successful in this event. Brian, you had the opportunity to test this implement earlier. What's in store for these athletes? Well, I think we got it dialed in, and I think we got it ready to go, and I think it's going to be a great test of overall strength and power to keep this thing going. You're going to deal with friction the entire way, so unlike a normal truck pull, where you can build some momentum and, and get it going, if you stop, the sled is gonna stop. It's not gonna keep coming. So you're gonna have to work the entire course to get it done. You know these strongmen very well. Who do you think has taken this event? Well, I think the addition of the rope is gonna, is gonna play a big role here. So somebody like a Matea, Mateus Kioskowski, who's it's so efficient with his truck pull technique. If he can stay down and keep it moving, he's going to do well. You're going to look at a guy like Tom Stoltman to do well. You know, some of these guys um, that have the endurance, maybe a Mitch Hooper, you know, if he can just keep going the whole way, the legs are going to start burning, the arms are going to start burning, and, and it's really going to come down to those last few feet and, and who can get it done. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You're welcome. Let's talk keys to this event, Laws. Yeah, I mean, Brian Shaw just mentioned all the big keys there. Leg power and leg endurance is going to be extremely important on this one. The athletes need to try and make sure that this ball just keeps moving down this track. If they end up stopping and it gets stuck, they're going to have to work so hard to get it moving again. So really, the athletes can get going quick, use that quad power, keep the hips low, and just fight through that lactic acid burn that they're going to feel halfway down this course. Now, this event was originally supposed to take place outside. It's one of the things that was changed due to, the, due to the weather. There's still quite a bit of moisture on the field where this test was going to happen. So they moved the whole thing inside. Now, that is not an easy task when you take a look at that iron bull. They had to disassemble it, move it inside, move the track, move everything to make sure that this thing was as safe and as fair as possible. Now they've put it here in the concourse at Dell Diamond Stadium. 
Yeah, there's so much work going into it. And then the fact that you've got Brian Shaw that spent hours testing this to get it right. The humidity has been a factor. It's affected how hard this is going to be. They think they've got it right. I think we're going to see a real challenge between some athletes really struggling, maybe going halfway down this course, to a few of them really digging deep and getting to the finish line. Now, this man is one of the best pullers on the planet at this type of, of pulling movement. We haven't seen him in action for a long time on a pull like this. Coming off the deadlift, his confidence needs a boost. He needs a big, big performance here. All the athletes will be watching. And Brian said himself, he has fantastic technique at this. You'll watch him get low in position. The hips will stay low. He manages that rope very, very well. And the addition of the rope is going to help guys like this because before they had the rope, it tends to suit the big bodyweight athletes. Now with the rope, it's a little bit more of an equalizer. Someone like Kiliuszkowski, he could finish this. Gilaskowski is getting set. And he is underway. Driving hard. Now the important thing is that he keeps going. What he doesn't want to do is come to a dead stop and have to get it going again. And you can see that fatigue already kicking in. He's slowing down. Really good start, but it's starting to get harder and harder. And now he's having to go to driving those hips down and just keep it moving. Very, very difficult pull this. I can promise you this guy is one of the best at this type of event, so already we can see how difficult it is. 50 feet the course. He's nearly halfway through his allotted time. One total getting, minute here. Getting close to that finishing line. He's nearly there. He's just got to keep that tightness on the rope, keep driving those hips forward. And you, hopefully the conditioning is there to keep going. I think he's done it. And Kielich Koski does get the entire 50 feet, 41.82 seconds for the Polish Titan. So rare that we see him happy, but I think by the end of this, he will be smiling. 41 seconds, from my perspective, I think that's good. You could see how quickly those legs started to burn up, and he is one of the fitter athletes. Maxime Boudreau will be the next man up. But one of the cool things about moving this event inside is that it puts the fans right on top of the action, right there to cheer on the athletes. Oh yeah, they are right next to the barriers. They're just kind of leaning over, cheering the athletes on, and the athletes will hear that. You can see how close they are there. Kiliuszkowski working hard on that second half. He started off really, really quickly, but as soon as that lactic acid builds up in those quads, you are then just fighting and digging deep. You can see the biceps pulling. He's trying to keep that rope tight to his chest. Pulling it in, driving the hips down, pushing with the quads. And you, you can feel the energy being zapped away from you, and you're just hoping that you're crossing that line. Well, not only did they have to move that whole iron bull up there, they had to move that entire track and reassemble it there on the concourse. That was something they were working on yesterday. And again, there's still a lot of moisture out where this track was supposed to be uh, towards home plate at Dell Diamond Stadium, and it was just going to be better for the athletes to move this thing inside. And this is actually, a, it's a pretty cool setting, like I said, puts the, the fans right on top of it as Maxime Boudreau is going to be the next man up as they have the Iron Bull reset. 1,000 pounds on that thing, that's more than 453 kilos. It's a huge weight and it's the friction that makes it even harder. You got that wood against those metal railings. The humidity is extremely high right now. But they couldn't have had anyone better than Brian Shaw to test it out. Maxime Boudreau, the next man up, both he and Mateusz Kieliszkowski failed to get a, a single rep on that Tower of Power. So Boudreau, like Kieliszkowski, looking to come up with a strong performance here in event yeah. two of six. Absolutely. He needs to put some points on the board now. Zeroing on the deadlift was kind of expected for Maxime. He knows deadlift isn't his strong point. But now that's out the way. You've got to forget about it, move forward to the next event. He needs to really put in a strong performance here because he does have some good events, but a second bad event will really make things difficult. We had that log medley coming up to close out the day. And last year at the Rogue Invitational, he finished seventh overall, but his best finish that year was a second place in that yoke log medley we had. 
and he has I'm, an opportunity to score some points this evening. I've said the fact that the, the finger is now there instead of the yoke, that's even better for him on that event. So a, a solid placing on this event, he'll be feeling a lot more confident. You can see there, just chalking his hands, they want to make sure there's no moisture at all. I've kept mentioning the humidity, but it is an important factor. They need those hands to be as dry as possible to get the purchase on the rope. Keep it tight. He's got very strong hands, strong arms. You want to utilize those in this event. And then, like I said, with Kiedyshkovsky, it's all about that quad power. Keeping the hips low, driving hard, and just working through that lactic acid. Unless you've ever experienced that kind of feeling of the legs burning up, it's a horrible experience. Maxime is just about ready here. He will try to best Mateusz Kieliszkowski's time of 41.82 seconds. He's the second of 10 competitors to go here. Decides to go without the mouth guard. So again, watch for him to kind of take, uh, an experienced athlete's gonna look to take all that slack out of that rope. So he should be trying to pull it in, get it as tight as possible. Double-footed stance, almost like you're, you're half-squatting is the stance position you want to be in. Drive those hips, starting quickly. Good. Good pace to start here for Maxime Boudreau, already through five feet, and now through 15. And it's about that 15 mark that we saw that Kiliskovsky had to start working hard. And seems to be a much tougher point there. And now he's having to dig deep. He's pulling him well with the arms, just not quite as quick as Kiliskovsky at this point. Needs to get a little bit lower if he can. He's halfway there, 50 feet is you know, the total you distance. You can see the arms are working, but he's using too much arms and not enough of that leg and glute power. Those big muscles in the leg are where you're going to move this event. The arms are important, but more to keep you in position. We should point out he's coming back from a, a very serious leg injury. Maybe the leg strength isn't quite where it needs to be right now. The arms are, you know, the veins are kind of pumping out of his arms there, but I think he is done. Final couple of seconds for Maxime Boudreau. Won't be able to complete that 50-foot pull in its entirety, but we'll see what his official final distance is. Be able to get it more than halfway down that track. I think we'll start to see how impressive that time by Kieliszkowski was. So hard as the first That's athlete right. to go out there, because you really don't know, especially on a new event like this. We've not seen this event before. We've seen variations of pools using various different equipment, vehicles, sleds. But this is a new piece of kit, so we have no data to look back on and say what's good and what's not good. And you mentioned we saw Maxime start to slow down right about the same point that we saw Mateo, so about that 15, 20 foot mark. Yeah, I think it's clear that that start isn't so bad, and then about the 15, 20 foot mark, it just hits them. Whether that's a combination of they just try to work hard to get to that point and the legs are pumping, or it just physically is a little bit of a, a stickier point on the track. And look how many people it takes <laughs> to push that thing back. We were talking earlier, one of the hardest jobs here is to be a, a loader on the strongman competition. <laughs> but you and nine of your friends trying to move something that one guy moved that far. Yeah. And they're strong guys, you know. They're all guys that train in the gym, work hard. Some of them compete in strongman or have in the past. But <laughs> when you see that many people pushing it back, it shows you how challenging it is. That'll bring up Luke Stoltman, who will be the third man to go here. So Luke is looking powerful. He's got the size and body weight for this event. He's got big, strong legs, needs to utilize them. Luke finished eighth in the Tower of Power with and one I think, rep. You know, based on his deadlift is, is not his strongest event, he, he'll be pleased with that. He picked up a few points. Here we go. This was a great rep for Luke. So important to get those points on the board. You know, we saw we saw a couple of athletes zero. Luke getting a few points, although it might not be big points, it just keeps you in contention. Now he can really build, and, and you know we know how strong his pressing power is. With two real pressing events in this competition, that's a great position to be in. A good solid performance here. Luke is back in contention. And we mentioned it earlier, but both Luke and his brother Tom competed last weekend at the Giants Live World Tour Finals. It's not like they're coming off a ton of rest here. Six days rest plus the travel, but these are pros, you know, they're, they're used to that and they are here to battle. And there's a man that's looking focused. 
A little bit nervous, as expected, on an event that you've never done before. But he's got all the tools to be good. Just needs to get that good start and then just dig deep. Luke will be the third man to go here. Mateusz Kieliskowski is the only man who's able to been, to been able to complete that 50-foot pull at 41.82 seconds. Maxime Boudreau is going to come in with an official distance of 31 feet 3 inches. Really interesting factor on this is going to be looking at the various different types of footwear that athletes choose. Obviously, you want to try and have as much purchase against that flooring as possible. If you end up slipping or kind of, you know, not being able to get any friction against the floor, you don't, you can't then apply the power that you have in those muscles. So Luke has strong legs. He's got the body weight. Let's see what the technique's like as well. Ten seconds. Oh, get themselves set. One minute to go 50 feet for Luke Stoll. They're about ready to go. There's the whistle. And starting strong. Let's see if it kicks in at that 15 foot mark for him as well. Yep. And there's the sticking point as Luke continues to work here through 15 feet. Now, as an athlete, you've got to kind of be patient and kind of almost the, the guys that are still to come will be watching this thinking, okay, I know at that point I need to keep working hard and not panic because now they've seen it happen a few times, you've got to be expecting it. Whereas for the guys that had to go early, it, it, it is tougher to cope with. Luke continues to inch his way down the floor here past the 30 second mark, about 20 seconds remaining for Luke Stoltman trying to get past Maxime Boudreaux's mark of 31 feet, three inches. Luke's going to now a double footed drive on each pull. It's a more powerful position to be in, but it's a much slower movement as well. Obviously, you'd like to just be able to keep going and use that momentum. But he's keeping this moving. Let's go, Luke. Get yourself up. Keep moving. One more pull. And that'll do it for Luke Stoltman. We'll see how close he got to Maxime Boudreau. That 30 feet close. unofficially right now. We'll wait for the official measurement on that. But a great effort from Luke Stoltman getting close to Maxime Boudreau there. Look at this, those legs. He's got huge, huge legs, and they are going to be full of blood right now. 33 foot, he does go into second place. Three men down, we have seven left, and it's Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who's still the only man who's been able to pull that thing Let's take another all 50 this. feet. So he starts really well. This is after the 15 foot mark, where he's having to really work hard. Goes to a double-footed drive, pulling hard on the rope, driving the hips down. You can see the effort on his face there. This is a tough pull. Luke Stolman able to get 33 feet. That will move him into second place right now, but still early in this second of six events that the strongmen will face here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. One more event remaining today after this is this is where time was called for Luke Stoltman. And now Evan Singleton will be up next. Evan, a man who was supposed to compete here last year at the Rogue Invitational, got injured in training, wasn't able to show up here in Round Rock. He is here this year. Winner of two shows this year. He's had an amazing year, to be fair, and he's kind of really, it looks like he, he's evolved as an athlete. The Tower of Power didn't go to plan for Evan. He's got, you know, his deadlift, he's got great power off the floor. This type of deadlift, you can't be quite as aggressive. It's a much higher starting position, and he just wasn't able to apply that leg power that he normally gets off the floor, lost a little bit of balance on some of the reps, but he's got to eliminate that, that now, move on to the next event. Good performance here, he is back in the game. Evan Singleton with two good reps, earned him four points in the overall standings coming into this event. And again, Evan has all the tools to be good on this event. He's a big man, he's got big body weight, strong legs, decent speed and endurance, very, very strong grip and arms. It's now just about applying it all on the day. Singleton in his first 
appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. So he's been able to see three athletes go so far. We know that start isn't too bad. He's going to hit that 15, 20 foot mark, and then he's going to have to dig deep. There's the 1,000 pound iron bull. And again, if you're just joining us, this event was originally supposed to take place on the field here at Dell Diamond. The conditions made that not the best choice, so they decided to move this indoors. That included the track, the implement, everything that we needed to do in order to bring this event to you. So it's a pretty big undertaking to move this thing from home plate up to the concourse. And it's turned out to be a, a pretty cool setting. The fans right there on top of the athletes as the T-Rex, Evan Singleton, is set for his one minute effort. Interested to see how Evan does on this. Like I said, he's got all the tools. Let's see how things play out. Taking the slack out of the rope. He's got a hugely powerful grip, strong arms. Stand by. And here we go. 41.82 seconds is the time to beat. And Singleton, like everyone else, is starting strong through those first 15 feet. Starting strong, but he didn't panic then as well. He kind of, I think, knowing it's going to get harder, he didn't go out too hard, knowing that you have to save the energy for this next phase. And now he's working hard, still moving well. Just needs to drive those hips down a little bit more. He's just getting a bit too upright. Use those arms, keep the hands close to the chest as possible and drive the hips down. It's moving still. Halfway through his... 60 seconds, now about 20 seconds remaining for Evan Singleton. It's closing in on Boudreau and Stoltman's distances. He's got time to get past him, just needs to keep digging deep. And Singleton has moved himself into second place. With five seconds to go now for Evan Singleton. It's a great effort here by Evan. He's giving absolutely everything. He's put himself into second place. And that will do it for Evan Singleton, and that is good enough right now for second place at 35 feet unofficially. Just look at the effort he's put in there. He's absolutely exhausted. You talk about context. What Mateusz Kaloszkowski did first man out, that is looking more and more impressive <laughs> as we watch yeah, yeah, you know, these athletes go out and fail to make that 50 feet. It's so hard when you're the first to go because you, you have no reference to, to go off. Now we are starting to see how impressive that was by Kiliuszkowski. But Evan doing what he needed to do here, get himself into that second position, picking up more points. From a technical point, it wasn't perfect, but the effort was unbelievable. And this is, the, this is the final part of this effort. You can just see how hard he is working to get just every bit of distance. Look at that. It's everything he's got is going into the, the arms look like they grew as he was kind of pulling towards the end. And now the iron bull being moved back into position. And that will bring out Tom Evans. Tom Evans with his American football background. Potentially this could be a good event for him. One thousand pounds on the Iron Bull again, more than four hundred fifty-three kilos. Tom Evans coming off a, a solid performance in the Tower of Power. He was able to get three successful reps in event number one. Yeah, he's just one of those guys that seems to keep improving every time we see him. He's getting a little bit better, and you know, the deadlift is really it probably his worst event in the competition. So I think we can see something good now moving forwards, gaining more experience at this level. Getting better every single time. He's a focused man. Look at him there. He's not a big social media guy, but when it comes to the competition, he's fierce. You mentioned the Tower of Power, and he went out and was able to give himself five points. Finished one rep ahead of Evan Singleton with three good reps. And Started very strong in the deadlift there. Those first few reps, absolutely flying. Good, solid lockout. We know his leg power is good. Third rep, just started to lose it on the lockout a little. And we will 
see if he can become the second man to pull the Iron Bull all 50 feet inside of a minute. Well, now we know how impressive finishing this is. So if, if he can finish it, he's going to expect big points. But even without finishing, he wow. knows now there's distances to beat. And you're going to, you know, you have that in your mind. As you're going through, you're thinking, okay, if you're the first to go and you have nothing to beat, it's very hard to keep pushing yourself. Whereas when you are within a few feet of a distance, mentally you think, okay, I've got 10 seconds. I can, I can keep pushing. I can keep working hard for that little bit longer. Strapped in, gets hold of the rope, looks calm and composed. Tom Evans in his first appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. Ten Looking to score some points here in the Iron Bowl. Stand he is set. Thirty-one point eight two seconds for Mateusz Kieliszkowski. He's the only man who's completed all fifty Slipping feet. Slipping around a little bit at the moment. Needs to get the hips a bit lower. I'm not sure if the footwear is causing him issues. He seems to be slipping more than any other athlete right now. I actually think he'd be better off just driving the hips a bit lower, bringing the chest a bit higher. Come on, Thomas. Does not look like they have any sort of markers on the floor for where the athletes have finished. So you mentioned having something to shoot for, like in an event like the Wheel of Pain, where you have the name have plates the markers, out there. Yeah, they you can see how far you need to go. They the had the distance there, but I'm not sure if the other athletes know what the other athletes have hit so far. But they know roughly what they're going to be looking for. They do pay attention. This Ten seconds left, and Tom Sarkin ran out of gas Thomas here. Was able to budget a little bit there with that final pull, and that will do it for Tom Evans. Wait for the official measurement for him. Tom Evans probably has the least amount of experience in a vehicle type pull out of all the athletes competing this year. And it showed a little bit there. The technique wasn't quite where it needed to be. He looked focused at the start, but as soon as he was going, you could see he was slipping on the floor. The feet were all over the place. He won't be happy with that. He's definitely capable of more. But what do you see here that you'd like to change? A couple of things I change. I change his footwear, firstly, because that was, it's, I think it's probably the, the slippiest I've seen out of any of the athletes that have been. But in terms of positioning, he was almost kind of rounding. So his hips are high. His head is low, but his hips are high. And everyone kind of thinks it's about being low. Your hips need to be low, not necessarily your head. And just a bit more tension on the rope. Problem is, once you kind of burn out a bit of energy, then just panic sets in and, and you can't think. You're just trying to get yourself through a few inches. But with a bit of practice, I think we'll see much, much better from Thomas, potentially next time we see this event. Five athletes down. We are halfway through the field here as Tom Stoltman will be up next. I'm excited to see Tom on this. You know, Tom is someone who's constantly improving. We, we see improvement on every event he does. Every time he's coming out, he's focused again. He's hungry. Just coming off a big win last week. He's got the body weight to be good here. He's got the leg strength. And as I say that, here comes the rain. And it was a good and idea. This is why this they inside. moved this inside, because you do not want to be doing this type of event. And it went, yeah, I don't know if anybody can hear that on the broadcast, but it went from clear skies to Pretty good downpour here. It's the first good one we've seen today. This is what we were dealing with most of yesterday. So glad that we're able to have this event go off as scheduled. Again, moving the entire thing, not only the Iron Bull, but also that track indoors. And they started doing it yesterday. Two-time world's strongest man. Second place last time he competed at the Rogue Invitation in 2021. Missed last year's show. He is back for the 2023. Coming off the Tower of Power where he took fifth place and was able to amass four good reps. He looked really solid and just burnt out a little bit on this last rep. It's 
interesting because I've seen him do some incredible deadlifts this year. Sometimes you just don't know how fatigued an athlete is. I think this event is going to be much better for Tom. He's got decent points on the deadlift. This is an event he's going to want to be top three in, though. Picked up six points as courtesy of that result. As we mentioned with his brother Luke, they competed last weekend at the Giants Live World Tour Finals. And Tom won that. In dominating fashion as well. He looked really, really good. But he is someone that wants to do well in this show as well. So uh, he's been training hard. Let's see what kind of shape he's in on this one. This is his second appearance at the Rogue Invitational. He finished second overall back in 2021. We've seen him do very, very well on events like the Wheel of Pain before. Similar, slightly different, but um, you know, same kind of muscle groups involved. He's got all the strengths. It's just applying the technique to this individual event. The Albatross is set. And we will see if he can match Mateusz Kieliszkowski in finishing this 50-foot pull in one minute. Now is where it gets harder. He needs to dig deep. There we go. It's moving nicely. He needs to keep stepping, keep it moving. Still making slow progress with that iron bull is still creeping forward as we approach the halfway point here. 30 seconds remain for Tom Stoltman. Tom still moving it forwards. Just going ahead of Thomas Evans now. Come on, Tom. Oh, that's a disaster. His shoes come off. So he's now having to pull with a shoe off. That's going to be agonizingly painful as well. He needs to keep it going. Come on, Tom. Finding a way to gut through this. Final seconds for Tom Stoltman. That's going to be painful. And His brother Luke looking on, and we'll have to wait for the official measurement there, but that's not what he wanted at all. So we'll bring the official distance, but it's not the start that Tom Stoltman would have wanted. We still have four men to go here. Good start and was able to sort of keep some momentum through that sticking point, but then the shoe comes off and it, you can't it's over there. this without a shoe on. You see his shoe on his, his left foot came off right of, about with about 10 he's seconds still left. Trying, here. bless him. That's going to be agony, though, if the foot kind of gets into those little rivets. You think of the power that he has, plus the weight of the ball pulling you backwards. Now four athletes remain, six have gone, and only one has been able to pull the iron bull all 50 feet. That's Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who was the first man out. 41.82 seconds is still the only finishing time that we have. Is Alexei Novikov, who's our defending champion, is getting set. Novikov coming in in fourth place after six good reps on the Tower of Power. He looked really solid on this. Very nice technique, takes all the slack out of the bar, good smooth pulls, technically very efficient. There's a reason he is the current World Invitational Champion. Very adaptable athlete, always prepares hard. We've only had the strongman competition here now for three years at the Rogue Invitational. And I think this is the first time that the defending champion has come in, not amongst the top athletes as far as favorites are concerned. And that just goes to show you how deep and talented this field is here. Yeah, uh, every year the, the standard seems to get higher. And with, with strongman, it's so easy. You, you, 
just a small injury can kind of knock you back. And you know, he had surgery this year. He's still coming back to his best form. But we're starting to see improvements now. And I think, you know, as the champion, whether you're 100% or not, you come in and you want to win. It's a pride thing, you know, and he's, he's an athlete that always likes to be on the podium, always likes to win. He's had two performances in his last two competitions that are just unlike him, and he wants to prove to everyone he's still one of the best in the world. He's 27 years old, and he's already <laughs> won 11 international <laughs> competitions, and that's, that's still young Very. for a straw man athlete. He's one of the youngest athletes competing in this contest, potentially the youngest. Alexi is getting himself set. 30 seconds. I think he is the youngest, you know. As Tom Stoltman right now, we just saw him go prior to Alexi, 23 feet 2 inches is going to be his result. That's not good for, for Tom. He, he'll be very disappointed with that. And obviously the, the shoe coming off will have been upsetting. 10 seconds. Stand by. Robokov is set. There goes the defending champion. is getting harder the more athletes that go. Overkopf continuing to crank away here, trying to get some momentum going on this thing, as this is where we have seen just about every athlete struggle, except for Mateusz Kieliszkowski as we approach the 32nd mark, so halfway through this one-minute window for Alexei Novikov. Alexei, in terms of body weight, one of the lightest athletes competing, which is a disadvantage on this type of event. It does seem like it's getting harder and harder the more athletes that go out. So far, Kalishkovsky, the only man to finish on 41.82, an incredible time. Singleton is in second place on 35 feet 10 inches. Final seconds for Alexei Novikov, just trying to get every bit of distance out of this thing as he possibly can. bring you the official result in a second, but it doesn't look. Right now they have him tied with Tom Evans at 21, 21 feet. <laughs> One more look at Alexei Novikov's effort. I think one thing's for sure, there's a Polishman that's starting to get a small smile on his face right now. <laughs> He doesn't often smile, and you know, he looked almost disappointed after the time he was given. But I think looking at how these athletes are struggling, he's going to be smiling a little bit more about it now. Alexei Novikov will wait for his official result. But as you mentioned, Mateusz Kieliszkowski is starting to count the points that he's going to pocket after this event. And as you mentioned at the top of this event, he needed that after scoring zero on the Tower of Power. Well, Mitchell Hooper will be up next. And this man has just been on an absolute tear. Debuted at the World's Strongest Man as a professional. In 2022, he took eighth, which is incredible. But then after that, has yet to finish lower than third. He is on a podium streak of 12 right now. He's been testing various different shoes for this event. Tower of Power went well. Solid performance, getting him second place. Seven repetitions. And that's, that's really Mitch's strength. He is consistent on almost every type of, of event out there. He knows what he needs to do. He's tested the, the shoes, trying to get the best grip. Very strong legs, very good endurance in the legs. He went from really struggling on a truck pull at World's Strongest Man in his debut to winning the truck pull at World's Strongest Man this year. This is a similar event. He had five wins and six competitions from November of 2022 to April of 2023. And you may have seen him, he went and put a shoe down on the track, and we meant there's no name markers to show where guys are. I don't know if that's the mark that he has in mind or just 
a visual cue for him, but there's a, he put a, something down by the track. Yeah, Mitch knows that points are important. It's not always just about winning every event. It's about putting the points on the board. He knows he's got really good events to come. This potentially could be a very good event, and he just wants those visual markers to, to give him a target. One minute. At this point, he won't even worry about Kieliszkowski because there's the big points disparity from, from the deadlift. He knows the guys like Trey Mitchell, Tom Stoltman, Novikov, Bobby Thompson, those are the athletes that are close to him, and those are the ones he'll want to stretch away from. And if you're just joining us and wondering why this event is in the concourse here at Dell Diamond Stadium, it's because of the weather yesterday it put so much moisture on the field, they decided to move it inside. As you can see, the grounds crew right now is trying to dry off the field after the latest downpour that we just had. And this entire thing, track and all, had to be moved up inside the stadium. Yeah, definitely the right call with the weather. Mitch Hooper is ready to go. Has to take that slack out of the rope. Mitch Hooper is set. And he is off. Now if you look at Mitch's positioning, although the chest is high, the hips are low. He's not rounding down, using those strong quads, he's keeping this ball moving. Where he put that shoe is his goal. I don't think he needs to worry about that right now. He needs to focus on picking off distances. He's closing in on Thomas Evans' distance first. He needs to try and make sure he's pulling hard on that, driving those hips through more. Past the 30-second mark for Mitch Hooper. He's already in fifth place right now. He's trying to drive those hips down a bit more, pull hard with the rope. He's digging deep, he's looking at distances, goes ahead of Tom Stoltman. Next target is Maxime Boudreaux's countryman. Got about five seconds to keep digging deep. He's getting close to Singleton's distance. Can he get past it? It's still moving. And it's going to be close. It's going to maybe finish in second place right now. We'll wait for the official measurement, but this is what this guy does. Doesn't win a whole bunch, but he's never really out of the top four. That's what he does so well. I mean, we, we can see now why Kieliszkowski's time was so, so impressive really making, you know, some of the best strength athletes on the planet look very ordinary. But it's about that consistency in terms of picking up points every single event. And it was really Mitch's just determination to keep pushing and keep working hard there that got him through that. Technique started to break down. The stickiness of this ball, the wood against the, the metal is kind of really challenging these athletes. But you've got to keep fighting. But that is going to be close to a top two performance, at the very least a top three performance for Mitchell Hooper. As now just two athletes remain, Trey Mitchell and Bobby Thompson, the two men who tied for first place in event number one. Uh, I'm excited to see Trey on this. The, the man has come in like a tank. He's looking hugely powerful. The deadlift was strong. I've been watching his training. He looks good. Again, another athlete that has all the tools to be good at this type of event. Two-time winner of the Shaw Classic. Second place at the Rogue Invitational last year. He wants to step up from that this year. And he may have been the biggest surprise in the Crown Strongman competition last year at the Rogue Invitational. No one was really talking about him. And he Do you know what, started though? off great in the Tower of Power, and he did the same thing again this year. He is one of those athletes that not a lot of people do talk about. It's just because he's a very mild-mannered, you know, kind, quiet person. But as an athlete, he's fierce, and he's capable of doing whatever he wants in the sport. Such talent, such power. Getting some advice from Brian Shaw there. Who better to get advice from? Let's see what Big Tex can do. He got through eight reps in the Tower of Power. To tie Bobby Thompson for first. Thompson's going to be the last man out. Now Mitchell's getting that harness adjusted. I think he's just testing it out. He wants someone to pull it so he can kind of feel it's pulling against his shoulders in the right areas. Now he gets attached to the mechanical ball. Got about 90 seconds before we start. Again, only one athlete completing that 15-foot journey. Trey Mitchell has finished fifth or better in his last eight competitions. Mm -hmm. 
Mitchell Hooper, meanwhile, is now in second place with 36 feet 7 inches officially. So that has to be Trey's target, is beating Mitch Hooper. I don't think he needs to worry about Kieliszkowski again, the same reason as we spoke about with Mitch Hooper and Kieliszkowski. Trey is just about set to go here. 60 seconds to pull that 1,000 pound Iron Bull, 453 kilos, 50 feet. And so far, only Mateusz Kieliszkowski has been able to do that. His time at the top of the leaderboard right now at 41.82 seconds. For the full 50 feet. So Trey Mitchell takes hold of the rope. Ten seconds. Mitchell is set. And here we go. Steadily moving. He's not rushing. Step fairly early. This is not what he'll want. It's interesting because we saw some of the early guys really blast out of the blocks to try and you know, get as far as they could, and they got stuck. So some of the later athletes have come out a bit slower, but that's actually made the start even harder. 30 seconds remain for Trey Mitchell here. This is not good for Trey at all. Needs to really dig deep and kind of pull himself some points back. That bull is creeping forward, so... Come on, Trey, Mitchell you need to get up. down. He's got 14 seconds left, and I don't know... I think he's... He may have fainted. We'll have to check on Trey Mitchell. He's being attended to right now. He's up. Looks like he's okay. That's why I love strongman as well. Look how many of the athletes are there checking on their friend. One more look, and as you mentioned, Trey started to struggle a little earlier than more than the other yeah, athletes that uh, we've seen on this. I mean, I don't know the reasoning. He has come in very big for this contest and powerful. Potentially conditioning, not where it needs to be, but. Hopefully he's okay. So much effort that they're putting through just to get this ball moving. We've got one athlete left to go. See the fans lining the barrier there at the, the concourse at the Dell Diamond Stadium. And that's one of the cool things about moving this indoors is that it has put the fans right on top of the action. Yeah. So Bobby Thompson will be the last athlete to go. Tied with Trey on the deadlift. And this is a big advantage for an athlete like Bobby. He's got some amazing events to come. Obviously the deadlift was a great event for him as well. The fact that he can go towards the end on this event and having those targets to beat is going to be very helpful. We will wait for everything to get reset before Bobby Thompson will be able to get himself out on the track. Second of three events that the strongmen will face here on the opening day of competition for them. We'll have three more events tomorrow. We're going to close things out in the strongman competition later on today with the log medley. Still waiting for everything to get cleared and make sure that Trey is, okay. Trey is all right. And we will 
weight on his official measurement as well. Bobby Thompson, as you mentioned, Miles will be the next man up. And really came up with a clutch performance in the Tower of Power to tie Trey he with did those very, eight reps. Very, very well. But if you if you notice there, Bobby was the first person down to, to help Trey as well. It's the camaraderie of the strength athletes is I think it's one of the reasons people love the sport so much. You know, they all want to beat each other, they're all fierce competitors, but great friends as well. And I think that's one thing that both of the competitions that are on display here have in common. You, hear a lot about the CrossFit community, and, I, and it's the same that you know, I haven't been in, involved in Strongman very long, but I definitely see the same sort of you know, camaraderie, competitors wanting each other to do well, helping each Absolutely. other out. Absolutely. Yeah, they all want to beat each other, but on each other's best day. And it's, it's one of the things I've loved about the sport for so long. So just a little bit of a delay here as we get everything reset and, again, make sure that you know, Trey Mitchell is all right. Mateusz Kieliszkowski is the only man who has completed the you know, Iron Bull inside of 60 seconds, was able to pull that thing all 50 feet in 41.82 seconds. Mitchell Hooper currently sits in second place. Let's take a look back at the opening effort here. And at the time, we didn't know how impressive this was. Yeah. I mean, he just blitzed out of the blocks. You could see it. This, he got a bit of a sticking point, but he managed to keep it moving, which was key. Really aggressive with every step that he took. He was keeping his form, he was keeping his arms tight, pulling hard on the rope, driving hard with the legs. And so far, the only athlete that has been able to finish this distance. Forty-two point five four seconds for Kiliuskowski, the only man to finish. We're going to step away when we come back. Event two of the strongman competition of the 2023 Rogue Invitational continues. Event two for the strongman continues here as Bobby Thompson will be the last man to go. Trey Mitchell is well. He is being attended to by the medical crew here at the Rogue Invitational. And as soon as we have an update, we will pass that along to you. Now the American Nightmare will try to match Mateusz Kieliszkowski and finish this entire 50-foot pull inside of a minute. So Bobby Thompson, our last athlete to go, needs to regain focus after what's just happened and just really give 100% on this event. Last athlete to go, very, very wide stance. He has issues with his ankles, so he can't get the mobility that the other athletes do. He's going to just utilize that hip power, stay high, pull hard with the rope, he has the advantage going last, so he's got targets to beat. And that's what he needs to do, is just keep pulling hard. Use those arms, pull hard into his chest, drive the hips down. There we go, keep it moving. Approaching the halfway point as far as a lot of time is concerned, as Thompson adjusts that harness. Now 30 seconds remain. He's got time, even if he can just pick up a few points, it'll be good for Bobby on this event. This is the worst event of the weekend for Bobby Thompson. Great start on the deadlift. Needs to just keep moving that ball. And it's still moving. He's got 15 seconds left. Thompson right now through 10 feet, trying to catch Trey Mitchell's mark of 16 feet, 7 inches. And he's going to call it in the final couple of seconds here. He's got a lot of good events to come. He needs to look after that body. That will hand 10 points to Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who goes out first and winds up winning the event. And he needed that after finishing last in the Tower of Power. Yeah, exactly what we said before the event. We knew he was good at this type of event. I didn't quite think it would be that good after him having to go out first. But my goodness, he put, he was the only athlete to finish. One more look at Bobby Thompson, who wasn't able to get 
much going on this thing, but as you mentioned, Law is not the best event for him. There is a log coming up later, so he has a chance to really do some damage in that log medley later on this evening. Bobby is going to enjoy that one a lot more, and he's got the axle tomorrow as well. Great event for Bobby. This type of event, not the best for the American Nightmare. Mateusz Kieliszkowski is going to pick up his second career win here at the Rogue Invitational as he is the only man to complete that 50-foot pull in its entirety. And that will rocket him up the overall standings with one event to go here on day number one. Kieliszkowski, 42.54 seconds officially. Mitchell Hooper, another top three finish, followed by the T-Rex, Evan Singleton, and then Luke Stoltman and Maxime Boudreau rounding out the top five. Yeah, fantastic points for Mateusz Kieliszkowski there, but Mitch Hooper doing great, and Evan and Luke also picking up big points. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with our event winner, Mateusz Kieliszkowski. Mateusz, congratulations on your event win. This is your second career Rogue Invitational event win. This is the first time, however, that we've seen the Iron Bull. What was the reality of this beast? Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's look much easier than reality pool. It's really, really heavy. I have never pulled so much big weight in my life because it's all time stopping. You must all time moving, moving. Uh, it's not like a track pool, like a one move. You must start all time and again, again, again. It costs a lot of energy for us. You had the winning pull, but you still looked a little disappointed at the end of that. Were you happy with this performance? You know, now I'm happy because I win. But uh, when I finish it, I talk that it's really slow time because uh, always when I do pull, pulling events, I go really, really quick. Also, I can say it's not my 100% because I had worst travel, worst trip in my life here. Over 48 hours, I had a passport problem, a visa problem, police control uh, problem with airlines. Uh, I came here 1 a.m. at morning and I sleep four and, one, four and a half hour, five hours like that, and I'm really, really tired. You know, it's, I know it's not my 100%. Thank you so much for your insight, and we look forward to seeing you back out here later today. Thank you, thank you. Percent doesn't matter, because it is a win for Mateusz Kieliszkowski. The W is what counts. He needed that. He's pulled himself right back into this contest as well, currently tied in third position for the overall standings and more and to follow along what's going on with the rogue invitational you can go to roguefitness.com slash invitational more action to come here as the crossfit athletes are back out on the floor to close out their day of competition the strongman will close things out later on this evening so stay with us still plenty to come here at the 2023 rogue invitational